Hello, welcome. Today we're going to talk about how you can access Norm's data in Hard Dollar. To access Norm's data, you access a menu option in the cost breakdown structure register, which is the screen that we have showing right now. And the place that you do that is this data source menu. And when you click on it, you'll notice that I have the option to access third party kind of data. You can see there's a number of options that Hard Dollar has. One of them is norms data. So we'll take a look at how we can access that data. But before I do, let's talk about the structure that we're going to be working in. We, you can see that this is a STO, Shutdown Turnaround Outage Project. Uh, we're shutting down Plant 21, uh, where we're going to, along with doing a vacuum tower outage, we're also going to be accessing the exchangers. And if I expand the exchangers, you can see I have two subordinate items under there. And under this E101AB, we see I have different components. And I have the removal and cleaning of a tube, tube bundle. And so under that removing and cleaning of the tube bundle, I have the actual removal of the bundle. This item here tells me the size and the uh, PSI and uh, other information about that bundle. But after moving that bundle, removing it, I want to transport that bundle to the area where we can then clean it, which is this other activity. So I need to bring in the transport task. And I'm going to do that using my norms data. Now, let's talk about the norms data. Where does it come from? What is it? <clears throat> Hard dollar sells a standard database of norms data. This is based on information that's come from uh, you know, hundreds of customers over many, many years. So this is based straight out of the industry, off experience of doing hundreds of projects. And <clears throat> the idea is to take each of the different components and pieces of equipment that are in a plant that you could possibly need to do work on and breaking them down into individual activities and then applying norms information to them. How many man hours does it take to do each one of those tasks? And to have that all stored in a database so I can just pull it right in. So let's do just that. We're going to bring in that transport of the heat exchanger bundle. We're going to bring in that task, which it should bring it in with all the man hours that I need. And along with bringing it in with man hours, I am also going to match it up with one of my crews and the system, the hard dollar system is smart enough to do that for me where it will find the, the crew, in other words, what uh, individual laborers are going to be needed and it's going to bring in those individual laborers. The place where my crews are stored, we call them assemblies in hard dollar. It's under my assembly register. So if we look at this assembly register, you can see I have an exchanger bolting crew. And within that exchanger bolting crew, I have a Boilermaker journeyman and so forth, and all the different uh, types of labor that is needed to do that. So when I go and access my norms data, which we're going to do now, it'll bring in that task along with the man hours that is necessary to do that task, and it's going to match it up with that crew that is appropriate for that task and bring it in with the correct rates. You can see an example where I've already brought in a task from my norms data, the removal of this heat exchanger bundle, and if I expand it, you can see there's an exchanger bundle crew on there. And if I expand it, you can see all the different uh, types of labor and equipment that's needed to do that work that all rolls up into this exchanger bundle crew. And you can see that, there, that it has put in the work hours and that is being driven directly from the norms 
for that activity, which if we, if we roll this back up, we have our total work hours here, which is being driven by this man hours number up above. This is the norm data that came in. So let's actually bring in that transport option. So I'm going to go to the data source menu. And actually, before I do that, I'm going to come up and, and select the correct item that I want this new activity to be a subordinate to, which is this remove and clean tube bundle. With that selected, I come in and I say, I want to add subordinates to the selected cost item. And we're going to select norms data. So this brings up the interface for me to access all that good norms information. You can see that it brings in some information automatically. The job code is, is the job I'm in, the description, and so forth. And then I have, uh, basically, the idea here is that when we're doing the norms lookup, we have three drop-down menus here. And it's like a funnel. At the very first menu, it's at a very broad level, at a trade level. Are we doing mechanical work, welding, hydroblasting? Well, in this example, we're doing mechanics. Then we get a little narrower in our search. Now we're looking within the mechanics trade, what type of equipment do, are we working on? So we're at the equipment level. So I could be working on cooling towers, piping, structural steel, pumps, vessels, reactors. In this case, we're working on a heat exchanger. Now that the piece of equipment is selected, it's now going to give me a subset, another list, that is based on all the different components that would be a part of a heat exchanger. So now I'm, I'm narrowing it down. Well, we are working on a bundle. So with that selected, now we get down to the actual activities. What are we doing? Are we removing it, installing it? Well, we mentioned that uh, we want to transport it. So I expand transport, and now it gives me the options of, you know, okay, what, what uh, size or what pressure, in this case, uh, for that bundle, what type are we working on? And we're working on this 150 to 300. So I simply select that, that type, and then over on the right-hand side, it gives me all the different uh, sizes and uh, we'll say we're working on a 32 inch bundle here. So I'm going to select that by putting a little check next to it and click add. And we now see that that is going to be added as soon as I hit the supply button to my structure and it will become a subordinate to uh, the cost item that I had highlighted. A Couple other things to point out before we add that in. You'll notice that I have a few extra columns here. Um, first of all, here's the norm hours. This is the number of man hours it says it takes to transport that size heat exchanger. But that may change depending on some other factors, such as difficulty. I can come in here, and there's a drop-down that basically puts on a factor onto my man hours. It will increase the number of man hours it takes based on the difficulty level. So we're working below ground level with respiratory protection. Uh, we are predicting that's going to be a factor of 1.375. Okay. So I can go ahead and put that in. Um, <clears throat> I also can do other adjustments. Put on an additional factor for whatever I would like and then when I do that, I'm going, going to want to make sure I put a note in there of why I put on an additional factor. These notes stay with this item, stay with the project, so that next year when I'm doing the same kind of work uh, and I maybe want to access and, and use it, what I had done the year previously, I can go in, I can see whatever notes were in there and uh, take advantage of that. Well, we have a factor on there. We're ready to bring this item in. Let's go ahead and say apply. And if I close my norms now, it takes me back. And I can now see the transport of that bundle is now brought in 
under remove and clean to bundle. Uh, it is, it did bring it in, always drops it in as kind of the, at the lowest of the, of the subordinate items there. So I might change the order because I want to transport it before I clean it. So we're simply going to pull this up and, and move it so it's the second of these three activities. If I expand this, we see then it brought in my exchanger crew as well and, and, and employed it onto that transport item. And I can see that it brought in uh, the number of man hours it takes to do that work. Okay. Now I can, ex I can open up this worksheet if I want to take a closer look and it lists for me, there's that crew, again I can expand it. Um, in this case it's a transport crew which only requires a, uh, you know, the, the truck and the operator of the truck. Now you'll notice that over on the right hand side it shows me my production um, in a lot of different ways. It's just taking that uh, man hours, notice that there's a red arrow next to that, it's telling me okay this is what was brought in that it takes 1.6 man hours per unit um, but then it backs it in and expresses it in all these other ways which I can turn on or off uh, just depending on what I might want to see on the screen but it even backs it into how many days that will be how many hours it will be great information that um, can be the foundation for what goes right into the schedule and uh, I also then have my factors on here. You can see my factors total 2.4. Um, so it's basically saying we're putting a factor of, of 2.4 on top of my man hours. So instead of 1.6, it's saying it's going to take 3.85 man hours. Okay. And I can bring a column up on the main register for the factored man hours if I'd like as well. If I want to make any adjustments now that I've I'm on this actual item. I can go to my man hour factors and you know maybe we don't need that seasonal uh, factor so we're just going to say uh, a factor of one um, and get it back to normal so we now have changed it so that if I look back on my production um, it's now just 2.8 man hours instead of the three plus man hours that it was previously. Okay. Now, about this data, this is an example where the interface that I had used, and I'll jump back into there, this interface <clears throat> is sitting on top of the norms data that Hard Dollar has already, which, like I mentioned, is a, a standardized set of norms. The data itself <clears throat> can be accessed uh, through this, this interface is where the end user would go in and be able to pull in whatever data uh, needs to be pulled into the, the existing project. But if I needed to manage that data, make changes to it, edit it, we have, um, that, that happens outside of the main hard dollar application. It actually is accessible through a web browser. And if I pull up this web browser, notice I'm in Internet Explorer, and I simply logged in to the norms data through Internet Explorer. And here is where I can, I can go into any of that data. Say I want to go in at the equipment level. If I click on that, oh, and it's asking me to log in again because it timed out. Let me just uh, do that. So you can see how you can log right in. So now if I want to click on equipment, here are all the, there's that drop down list. There's each of the uh, different categories that are in that drop-down list and I can actually edit make changes to the data itself through this interface okay so you could have somebody in your organization that takes care of that that goes in and keeps this up to date and updates any any uh, man hour changes whatever I may need to change in there now last of all we've been doing an example with our set of norms data but really this has been designed to be able to interface with whatever data you might have. So whatever client data that is in your organization, you may have it um, currently in access, let's say. 
this can actually sit right on top of that and interface with it. Um, so basically, uh, the name, the naming here can be whatever you have naming the columns in your database. And uh, then you would be able to access it and manage it the same way from this interface. And then within the application itself, if I jump back to Hard Dollar, um, this window where you have the drop down menus, it's already set up to, it will know to populate these menus with your information. Um, so that's, that's kind of the, the other option for you is you can take advantage of the good information that you already have. What is necessary for that? Well, it needs to be in a database, a relational database, which means SQL or Access. Either one of those works great. We've, we have experience working with both of those, and, and it's really made to work with those. So if you have your own data, you'll be able to do the exact same thing, use the same interface to manage it and to pull it into your projects. So hopefully this gives you a good feel for how this information works and uh, shows you how you can really take advantage of all the good information that you may have, uh, plus the standards that we have, be able to have a full database um, of uh, man hour information that you can pull in at any time in a very quick and easy manner uh, and be off to the races um, and build up your projects and build out really how long is it going to take to do each of those tasks, what are the resources that are going to be needed, um, and to be able to do it in really a third of the time that it typically takes is, is what we, we consistently hear from our customers. So. Uh, we'll go ahead and, and close up, and uh, we'll talk to you next time.